Welcome back, everybody, to During Business Hours. I'm Chris. I am Abdur. How's it going? Abdur. Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you for having me. So we were discussing The Boys, mm-hmm. the fun-loving... Hold on, let me get an IMDb for this one. 2019 series 2-0. Two um, so, a group of vigilantes set out to take down corrupt superheroes that abuse their superpowers. Have you ever seen Powers? Powers in the in the show? The show. From PlayStation Network, it was like their debut show. Powers, Powers. That sounds familiar. Maybe I've seen a clip. That, that was like the first real-life superhero show that was raunchy. It was fuck this, fuck that. You know, blood, guts, sex, gore. Everything was... TV mature, but like not crazy. Mm-hmm. And nowadays, but nowadays, people want more, and The Boys gives you more. So I'll set it up for people who don't know. Carl Urban, master actor, right? I don't even know who Homelander is played by. Carl Urban, master manipulator, played a British character whose wife was. Disappeared in season one. Couldn't find her. Didn't know she was raped, murdered, whatever. He found out she was raped by the most powerful superhero in the world. Mm-hmm. Untouchable God. So they set out to like take down his presence and everything. Turns out she's alive. She's got a six-year-old kid. Mm-hmm. Turns out it's the rapist kid. And the rapist doesn't even know. Season two, rapist baby mama. Uh, what is the word? Not baby mama, but... The, the milk mother, we call her. Yeah. Ends up getting blown to bits by Homelander and Butcher, Carl Urban. End of season three, looks like they're all on the same team, except there's this Nazi woman trying to make Ubermensch everywhere. And Homelander's her one person to do it. She manipulates him with hand jobs and kisses. And uh, season three starts very similarly, now a one handed, very badly burned. Uh, with Nazi, the one hand she's Nazi, got. Yeah, with Nazi queen. Ends up trying to jerk off the Ubermensch leader and then kills herself. So now they're back at it again with government support. Now that everyone knows they're the boys, they take down the soups. Yeah. F- fucking scene one. Scene one. <laughs> what happens? Oh, God. With full cock. Full cock out. And I, unfortunately, this, this show is very graphic. We see a man shrink down to a termite, a fucking termite sized man Mm -hmm. having consensual homosexual sex Mm -hmm. in a way that I've never seen before. It's new stuff. He was cleaning pipes. Mario. There we go. Mario. So to, to travel the tunnel to get to the prostate. Mm Mm-hmm. And he ended up sneezing because he had done a bunch of cocaine. And half this man's body explodes. And all you see is the bloody gourd version of the termite man. Or what did they call him? Terminex? No, Terminex sponsored termite. His name was termite. Termite, yeah. The gory, like, oh shit. When that happened, it was 1 a.m. And I jumped out of my seat. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. Yep. Now I... That's wow. when you know it's you're watching the boys. Yeah, exactly. It's it's such a raun- raunchy show you never would expect. The series basically is just a mind fuck mm-hmm. of in your face craziness, the worst you could expect. Mm-hmm. But it is so enticing. The oh, yeah. drama. It's like all of a sudden top tier. Top tier. This this brain popper that we've been chasing for seasons. Yeah. We all knew at the end of the last season. Yep. It was her. Turns out she's the head honcho's adopted daughter and she's got a daughter on top of that. That's why he feels indestructible. Indestructible. I think Homelander knows that Homelander could be killed by her. Oh. Yeah. Dang. Like that's why he's in check. Like something happens to me, you'll die. Dang. Like that's all I can see plan. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know, spoilers, we're talking about the first three episodes of uh, The Boys. Mm -hmm. But man, the guy who plays, what's his name? I just was on it. What, the main Vought guy or? Yeah, no, because Soldier Boy, what's his name? Uh, Ackles or Ackman? Uh, Jensen Ackles and um, 
No, Jensen Ackles is the other one. But basically, he was being introduced as like some person that's going to know everything about everyone and be in control and more powerful than Homelander. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's some weapon that could kill him. I don't think there was a weapon. Mm -hmm. They're jumping into like episode three, but I don't think it was a weapon. I think he got kidnapped. Yeah. And then put on ice. And then all of a sudden he's a more powerful weapon than Homelander. But it's, so he's uh, a series. This he's a basically their version of Captain America, right? With the whole fit, it's pretty kind of on the face. He's got a shield and everything. So episode one, mm-hmm. you get into it and you think, well, shit, the main dude is out of the out of the business. He's working for the government. Yeah. Like he wants a normal life. He wants to have a superhero hot wife and be done with everything. And he's fighting, he's fighting by the rules, playing by the rules. Yeah, and you, you get dirt on somebody, you find out they hurt somebody, okay, they go to jail, they serve time. Or you, now, here's the trick part, halfway through the episode, you find out they communicate with Vought and, like, trade mm-hmm. playing cards. Let me give you this superhero who you don't know but murdered six civilians last week versus all this shit. If you really had superheroes with that type of power who could sneeze and blow up a building absolutely you would have casualties. This yeah. show is so realistic. Mm. The drama, the politicalness, the the Cameron guy who does all the TV shows acting like Tucker Carlson. Yeah. Fucking hilarious. And then, of course, Mr. Uh, Ubermensch or Homelander, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> just mentally broken if you grew up as a test tube baby. Letting that fake suicide girl in episode two jump forcing her to jump even though you're supposed to be my birthday safe yeah and then find the irony is she didn't want to jump anymore after no no it wasn't that she was hired to make it look like she was a jumper oh annual birthday save how do they know that there's a jumper oh man so when she was like no no, no i'm good i don't want to jump you're jumping <laughs> oh you're jumping yeah i insist he heard too much and he's he's smart about it to know that he can't let shit leak but the whole like oh they love me and uh the trick in the third episode that now it goes from, all right, I fear having people hate me to now seeing what he really is. Right now I'd rather have people fear me and I will start with the pressure points of the United States and then the world and then social media and the internet, you'll all be fucked. And then I'll just kill every world leader. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, you, you would think Homelander couldn't be as strong or wouldn't be stronger than Stormfront and five other people. Hypothetically, you would assume that he could be beat down or bleed. Mm-hmm. But I wonder if he's that strong. Because I, I haven't read the comics all the way through, but I did. There was something called a, a hero gasm. So this is based off the comics. Oh, yeah, this is 100% based I, off I, the comics. I didn't comic. even know about it, comics. Like, I thought this was like an original. Well, oh. Is anything arism, original? That's a good point. That's fair. Yeah, so this is a, a comic book series called Herogasm. It's a six-issue comic book limited to Garth Ennis, the writer, uh, and Ken- Kenneth Burns, John McCree, originally published. Um, originally published as a spinoff of The Boys, set between the issues of 30, 31. Herogasm was collected to trade paperback November 2009. was the fifth volume of The Boys and The Boys' Herogasm. Gotcha. So apparently there's going to be this giant thing called Herogasm, where all the superheroes in the world show up for an, an event or a party or something, and they're all on drugs, doing whatever they want, and <laughs> it's just like free reign because they are heroes, right? Yeah. I can't wait to see what happens because the last clip we saw in episode three was Starlight making out with Homelander mm-hmm. and then having her like nervous twitch. And she's like, my side hurts. Anything she doesn't want to do but does, I can't believe she did that. Like, you would think, okay, she's a spy, great, but now Homelander's going to get that. You can't stop. Like, you you thought she was claiming that the Deep had mouth raped her. Yeah. To the world. And then goes to, oh, I'm not going to be on the team of the man who mouth raped me. And then to, well, I'm not just a sexual, you know, abuse victim. I'm also going to manipulate this man and make him think that he can have sex with me. And I'm like, what the fuck is your mental status right now? 
Well, and, and, and she was kind of misled thinking that she had, because she was considered a co-captain thanks to... Ratings. The ratings, yeah. Yeah, it's oh. all for the ratings at the end of the day. Oh, yeah, because if they're not popular, what are they? Yeah. Oh, man, I couldn't imagine if that shit was in real life. I feel yeah. like it's, a lot of it's applicable to real life. You know, oh, yeah. well, all these different Trump characters. One, right? His ratings. He's got great ratings. <laughs> you, you can say whatever you want about him. His ratings are through the perfect. roof. It's perfect. We're going to go to the YMCA. It's fantastic. We built it. We brought it back 10 times better. It's great. People love to hear that. It, they, they love to hear him say that's bullshit. Mm -hmm. That's horse shit. It's fake news. Mm -hmm. You're fake news. We don't like you. You're fake news. Get out of here. You're fake news. You want to know why we don't listen to you? You're fake news. Have a nice fake news. He has, he has rhetoric with the, the few syllables that he uses. He has rhetoric. It, it merely makes you uh, question like, what's the point of using all the big words if you can get your point across? It's, it's horrible. It's, I couldn't imagine... I'm not going to play any clips from the boys because Amazon is a fuck. Mm. Yeah, a, a whole crazy fucker uh, when it comes to copyright. But what I will do is, what are you more excited about when it comes to the boys? What do you want to see? That's a good question. Um, I'm excited to see how things turn out. Who's uh, the main protagonist without the superpowers that he tries to, you know, Play Jack by Quaid. the books, right? He's trying Huey to play by Campbell. the books. Yeah, Huey. And, and so... Aaron, and now Jensen Ackles. It is Jensen Ackles, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite character, hands down, is not Anthony Starr. It is definitely going to be Karen Fukuhara. Karen Fukuhara. Yeah. And it's funny because she yeah. doesn't say any words, but you can see she through her facial expressions and the and signing it, and just... Yeah. She, her body language. As an actor, she's portraying like this whole like badass vengeance up until season three. And now all of a sudden she's, there's depth. I want to mm -hmm. go, me and my brother used More. to go, we used to do this. We wanted to be kids. I just wanted to be a kid for a moment. And then we killed all those people. Her reliving the trauma at that theme park, seeing all the kids being exposed. Dude, to it's, it's fucking amazing. The, uh, the shit that they can do with this. Mm -hmm. But at the other point, there's so many fucked up things it's going to trigger for people. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. No, this show will definitely trigger people easily. It's meant to trigger. And then I got to say, so this guy, this guy. <laughs> Jesse T. Usher, um, decided, oh, well, you know, my heart is the size of a cantaloupe and I can't run fast. So he's like a little chubbier than his, his previous self and Homelander keeps making fun of him. So he... Comes out in this African colored, so he says it's African, like native colorway, and he's going to be more for the people and, and do more. And then he goes, well, maybe I can give their family some money when he's talked about an innocent black person getting beaten in the street. And I'm like, you're a fucking superhero. You could have gone smacked and arrested that dude. You could have worked for the FBSA or whatever, the, the Bureau of Super... You could have done so much shit and been a... Uh, a person for change because there's obvious racism in the show. It's fucking ridiculous. It's, I don't know who my favorite character is, but that guy is definitely the guy that I hate the most because he's really, he's very self centered. He's all about his fame and glory. He's comparing himself. He literally said, Yeah, I'm the Michael Jordan of, of heroes. And he literally, in the first episode of the series, killed the main guy's Huey's girl. He ran into her. He was on drugs. It was an accident. If he would have stopped and said, I was sorry, made amends, like a, a real amends, I would understand him and like, okay, you're a hero trying to do something, an accident happened. Mm. I would have been upset. Absolutely. Somebody ran my wife over, but understandable. Like there's a difference between being a cocky, I, I'm untouchable, like the untouchables. And so it goes to what I'm talking about here. I just saw this the other day. Did you know that in China, they are modern day fucking racists? About well, what? Any black man on a movie. So in China, this is American's poster. America's poster, England, UK. This is China. Not just China. I think 
Oh, China for sure, but it's but one China everywhere policy. outside the U.S., people assume oh racism isn't real. But India is is pretty India bad. India is very racist very, as well. Yeah, anyone colorism. Yes, it's very real because they're it's not even purity type thing. It's more like difference. We don't want your difference infecting things. A lot of it's it roots from the colonizers leaving the light skinned people in power. And they perceive the, those of the lighter complexion so will look, be the wor- worthier, more eligible. So you, people of my oh, there's tone, white, you there's, won't see them there's in the white Bollywood privilege, films. 100%. I claim my white privilege a lot. Mm-hmm. I say, this is white privilege. I got this. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. There is no reason, no fucking reason that I should ever have been able to drive nine years without a license. Eight years. Damn. Eight years. Some never, never pulled over. Registration paid. Uh, uh, insurance paid, had that money to give to my father even when I was struggling. Mm-hmm. The only time I got pulled over was when I was already parked and the cop was like, oh, luckily I didn't catch you. If I was black, he would have in the car, out the car, mm-hmm. cuffs on, what you got, how's it, whatever. Yeah. But this shit, I am not one to fight change very much. I'm like, I like the status quo and I get I get my shit done and I've benefited from the world. Yeah. So I tend not to be like, all right, let's take away all guns or do something drastic. I'm not a drastic person. This got me in my feelings the other night. And I was like- Oh, this? John, I've kind John, of known about this. I've, I've tried these friends. I was not a huge fan of Black Panther until after he passed. I was on the hype train. And I was like, shit, he did some amazing he's things. He's an amazing actor. I didn't think so. I was like, he's just another- Chadwick Boseman? Yeah, yeah. I thought he was another- B-list guy, mm-hmm. knew nothing about him. I wasn't a fan of his work. Mm. So I went back, watched his work, and then this the story of him and Denzel Washington yeah. is fucking astonishing mm-hmm. how a seed can grow to an oak. You know what I mean? Like the, that whole thing, like you don't know, it's just going to be one, you throw it out, a pit of a fucking melon, whatever. Boom. A few drops of water make a difference. Exactly. So then I'm like, man, you know, Chadwick Boseman, the guy from... Star Wars got most of his fucking lines cut. He was supposed to be the, the main antagonist Wait, with- Was he in Star Wars? I don't not Chadwick Boseman, sorry, uh, John Boyega. Yeah. So John Boyega had a equal role originally mm. to Ray. He was supposed to be Kylo Ren, like the two born pairs, the soul, whatever. Mm-hmm. Originally, that's how it was in all the, the, the preemptive, here's how we're going to do this, here's how we're going to do that. And then I think- the way they pushed him out from all like separate areas really made them rewrite it to where the other white actor mm. became the the Adam lead. Driver. Yeah, Adam Driver. Yeah, great actor. I, I think he is his story, his background is what sells people on the idea. He's just a marine. Yeah, tried out for a couple of things. Look, he's great at it. Absolutely. I watched a couple of his uh, melodramas with my wife. I can't stand the way he gets into arguments with people. Oh, the one with the Scarlett Johansson? Yeah, it's, it's always the same. Mm-hmm. No, I just don't like it. This is not the way it is. And then he gets all huffy and puffy, and this is just a da 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can do that at a bar alone. This is not real life. And the same way he gets, like, he raises the whole, like, oh, I'm going to do this, and then I killed my father, and da 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 I don't know. It's just not very great for me. Well, I think that was me. Yeah, China's blatant racism, it's, yeah. It's fucking crazy. I did not think that it was a, that big of a deal until I started saying or seeing shit with, like, John Cena and other people. I don't and, even think it's the biggest issue uh, in China, racism. Okay, they got no, other things. Dude, they are, oh, well, let's not get into that. No, fuck it. Yeah, absolutely. Biggest issue is that they are a communist nation that think they can control their people and control their actions, control everything. We as a, uh, a governed people by ourselves, apparently, right? We still have a government that controls and tries to, to manipulate and then control the media. Mm-hmm. And, and now social media is starting to be like, well, we're our own government. Now that we have these rules and regulations, mm-hmm. and we can govern our people. More sovereign. It's, it's all fucked. It's all leaning towards... But we can talk about it. Absolutely. And then they can flag this video, throw a copyright on it, throw litigation at me. Absolutely. Xi Jinping, I'm not saying you need to be murdered. There's just... There wouldn't be one nation without you. Yeah. You know? It's, uh, I, I don't believe in the, the one, one China policy. Absolutely. Uh, what was it? John Cena, one of their biggest advocates, got in trouble 
Did you ever see that? They uh, had to apologize for calling Taiwan their own fucking country. Apparently he speaks really, uh, pretty good uh, Mandarin. He, he lived there because he was bought by the China party, oh, wow. uh, Communist Party, to live there for a while to promote WWE. Mm. Millions upon millions of dollars. He's worth like 60 million alone. And that's on a conservative estimate. He's probably half a billion dollars. Especially Fast and the Furious all franchise, these all the other promotions, movies. that series on uh, HBO. Yeah, I, I wouldn't doubt if he owned Former a pro piece, wrestler John Cena has touched off an international of controversy. Cena apologized to the people of China after calling Taiwan a country during a promotional interview with a Taiwanese broadcaster. Taiwan is a country. I mean, it, it's, it's an independent country. John Cena is. is not alone in Hollywood in towing that line. <laughs> A late show has acquired the full apology. Wrongly, wrongly, wrongly. The funny part of this Mm -hmm. is that he looks like, you've seen those TikToks where they can cut and duet? I would assume... You got John Cena's face here. You got a guy with a gun here. Uh, you, know, you know what I'm oh saying? Oh, my God. Like, yeah, well, yes. Yeah, is it his gun or is it his bank account? But it's oh, no, no, no. Yeah, well, no. So you probably have the, the little stock portfolio coming down where it's like dipping. Mm-hmm. And then you got him and then throw some sweat on it, Alan. So you got that side by side. And then you got a gunman going uh, so this statement. Like eager type of, here we go. Uh, whoa. Your eager soul. Not even a real place. place. Wow. Like Zootopia. Man. Don't get me started on Tibet. They have, like, gathered and stolen people and put them in camps in Tibet. See, Tibet Tibet. would be a place I'd want to visit. No. No, no, not visit, not be forced to go to, but visit with protection. If there was protection. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's like saying I'd like to go to Korea in North Korea. Yeah. With protection. <laughs> That's true. Jong Yao, wo ai gong juan zhong, zhong guo gong zhong guo ren. Can you believe this? Zhong guo gong zhong guo ren. Wow. 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 <sighs> Man, it's that's what happens when you're on the spotlight. You can't be, you can't really be sharing your opinion. It's fucking crazy. But he like, oh, like this guy says, ghost gum. He has a bizarre relationship with China. It is fucking insane. Mm. I've never seen somebody have a relationship with China like him. Uh, he, he obviously makes millions and millions of dollars. Into China is like Dennis Rodman to North Korea kind of? I think that's what the guy from Ghost Gum said is like, uh, you know, he compared all these weird actors and people having these weird relationships to foreign dictators. Yeah. Uh, Steven Seagal to Russia. And then there was, uh, what's his name? The guy, um, Sean Penn was also in China or Russia or somewhere. And then a bunch of others. But I couldn't believe John Cena, you know, do, 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 can't see me guy. Uh, like yeah. even my son dances when that song comes on and I'm just like, uh, zhong, 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 you know, like the wrong, wrong, wrong. Uh, it seems like he speaks amazing Mandarin too. He lived there for a long time yeah. promoting Fast and the Furious 7 through 10. Like just all... Uh, in some random place That's awesome. eating ice cream and going, oh, we, me, love K-pop. Yeah, shit, 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 shit. You know, like- it, Get paid tons of money just Tons of money to sit there and like eat uh, bats on a stick. Or, sorry, it was chicken on a stick. But it's just like, I've been to Korea. I lived in Korea. The villa is cool. The, the sightseeing's cool. The people were not so nice while I was there. I was there in mm. 2008 to nine. And boy- Buckets of piss from 10 stories would be thrown at soldiers intentionally. Really? Yeah, if you were dressed in any colors or um, your outfits or if you had your buzz cut going out, you had to wear a hat. Why is that? Discriminated. Discrimination, huh? Big on that, I'm assuming. Mud thrown at us. I'm going to say mud. 
buckets, man. Yeah. There was constant at the MP's office complaints about this person at this address did this, tried to steal my money. I was held up at a taxi and they said they were going to call the police if I didn't give over a hundred dollars instead of a hundred won. Wow. Um, little stupid shit. I actually got into one of those arguments when I was in Korea. I was leaving Korea to go home on vacation to see my wife at the time I was married. Mm -hmm. And stupid me, I was like, oh yeah, I'll pay you a hundred, a hundred won to take me to the airport. It was like 70 won. I needed to get there fast. 70 won is like $35 American at the time. It was two to one. Okay. And for some reason, this man thought I was going to pay him 200 won. Uh... And he said, no, $100 American. I was like, no, no, no. So I gave him the 70 won or the $35 American because he saw that I had money. Mm-hmm. I was getting ready, so I already did transfer my money and my currency and everything. And I go straight in, and they pull me out of security to pay the man another $60, $65. Man. It was either that or be held up for five years in a government prison. They're like, they don't see your cases. They see your cases when they have donated judges to see your cases constables, et cetera. It's, it's horrible. Foreign countries are scary. That's so why you need travel insurance. Diplomatic you, immunity would be good for those circumstances. If you were John Cena. Do, do, yeah. do. That's when you can use your influences do, do, to your do. benefit. Can't see this. Yeah, that's it's, a good point. That's crazy because then you got, so like Soldier Boy, right? Yeah. Going to Nicar- Nicaragua is what was it was. Nicaragua? Nicaragua, yeah. They yeah, showed up to Nicaragua, so. him and his little pay, uh, Payback 7, or what was it? Oh, the, yeah, the, his team? Yeah, Payback or Paychecks, whatever it was. Paychecks is a payroll company, sorry. Uh, but it was funny because I'm like, man, you got diplomatic immunity. Wow, Stan Edgar, who's like 20 years old, whips out a oh, the general whatever of so-so di- diplomatic immunity. And she's like, Grace Connolly said... Um, oh, this is some bullshit. And he's like, make sure we have water for our tents. And those fuckers got them spotted by the enemy with that little little butterfly man or whatever. And then he ate a rocket in the ass. (laughs) And we found out they're really tying loose ends. We found out how Black Noir was allergic and that he was Stan Edgar's brother. And that that's how his face was all melted off. So I wonder if he has healing capabilities because, like, do you remember how when he took down that um, that tea room or whatever they called it, the Iranian Iranian tea room? Yeah, that was him. The the something light blowing up guy, and it blew up half of Black Noir. But where? How was he not harmed? Mm. Does he have a regenerative ability? Maybe. Yeah, because he was sitting there going, oh, I need my mask. And I'm thinking to myself, or was his face burned already? And that's why he just took the blast. That's a good point. Yeah, so like that's the, the loose ends are starting to tie up. I need more than eight episodes. You can't There's tell only me. only going to be eight episodes a Eight season. episodes. I mean, they're each like at least an hour long, right? So you, you, get, you get a good amount. The amount of, so imagine they procra- they're like, they're uh, planning this, right? I may be demanding saying I want more than eight episodes but it's because it's too short for the quality content they have yeah it's like well you can compare it to you know Game of Thrones like a lot of similarities I noticed you got Homelander you got the mountain they both raped and uh you're talking about just piece of shit people yeah one's, yeah. one's human and one then becomes un- inhuman yeah I get it but my point being the quality and the ratings yeah. difference if you're getting 400 million people to watch this within two months, yeah, we deserve more. We're putting a lot into it. Give us a little more or give it to us twice a year. There's a lot of shows that they get show so much in ratings. Mm. They don't pay their actors anymore. They don't pay for higher uh, effects. They don't pay for better treatment to the cast or crew. Where's the money going, you Where's think? Where's the money going? Hmm. What would you Production do? Production value? No, it's not upping the effects or anything. That's the production value. It's not. They're not paying people more. They're not. No. They're getting the same contract. Hey, we're going to sign you for three seasons on a pilot if it gets picked up post-pilot. That three seasons, here's 500K for first, 250 for any reshoots, uh, 500K for second, maybe 800,000 for third. Because they're going to shoot the first two in sequence where they're going to know the ratings, go, all right, boom, pick it up, do another one, the same way they did with the boys. Yeah. 
from a financial standpoint, it's good because they know they're going to get quick turnaround for the ratings. On the third, they're going to take a little time to steam over what they could do in the content. Maybe they'll bring in a couple more writers, pay a little more for notable names like Jensen Ackles mm-hmm. and say, oh, okay, let's let's build something here yeah. like they did with the boys. So now I want to know what the budget is for the boys. Yeah, I don't think it's going to end on a season three. I'm sure there's going to be more seasons to come. There's, Just like you were saying, they there is so more. many comic books. They have enough for 10 years. 10 wow. years. So, The Boys 2019 cost $10 million an episode. $10 million, huh? <laughs> Don't tell me the tick. Does that. It kind of also reminds me of Game of Thrones. The Tick was $5 million per episode. It was a funny show, but it was definitely not that good. Good Girls Revolt. It costs that much. Uh, that's, that's a younger version. Now, Jack Ryan, definitely. Was that good? $8 million per episode. Fuck yeah. Absolutely. Sneaky Pete, I haven't seen $9 million per episode. Uh, the Grand Tour, never watched it. I think it's just because it's one. Goliath, I've heard, is pretty good. $10 million per episode. And the boys is ten million per episode. The fun part is in this. I'm going to show them. Mm-hmm. We'll go widescreen for it. So basically, you're going to see the Invisible Man being, you know, fifth from the right is translucent. In the first season, he had an explosive piece shoved up his anus and was blown to smithereens. And then you have Homelander on the right, uh, A Train, Black Noir. Noir. Uh, what's her name? Not Stormfront, right? No, because Ra- so. she's more a normal person this season. She's yeah. not fighting. She gave the, the new V to the people. Oh, I forgot her name. And now normal people can be, uh, you know, yeah, superheroes too. Butcher fucking has all the powers. Crazy side effects. Uh, I wouldn't say crazy. It was very like lay in bed for a day. You'll be fine. Side effects. The man in the high castle. I wonder when that comes back. Let's see. I'll make a new tab for that. And then you got Crisis in Six Scenes. Oh, that's nothing I've ever seen. And then Lord of the Rings is total budget of a billion dollars. How many fucking episodes bought the rights in a whopping, a 2017 for a whopping $250 million. And according to the terms of the deal, five seasons will be produced to the prequel season, uh, series. I'm a big budget, Lord of the Rings fan. So five seasons, two hundred million per season, eight episodes. It's twenty million to forty million an episode. Damn, Jesus Christ! It's gonna be beautiful. Beautiful five seasons. That's crazy. So Man in the High Castle is about like alternate worlds and shit. Have you mm-hmm. never seen that? I haven't. So they notice these like basically there's alternate realities mm. that have videos of like different things happening. A bomb never fell. Uh, Japan and Germany never collided and ended up taking over the U.S. But it starts with this woman being inside the the U.S. in San Francisco, I think, and it's ran by the Japan J- uh, Japanese people. So there's a lot of racism in there over the Americans. And let's see. So season four hasn't come out yet. Okay. There's so many good series, dude. I'm telling you, it is. Outstanding the amount of fucking people that, uh, oh, don't tell me that Al Pacino's going to be in The Boys. I will shit myself. It's outstanding the things that they're doing. Absolutely. Amazon, for all their faults and all their bullshit, they do pretty well. Pretty damn well. <laughs> you know, I was watching, you ever seen Barry? Barry, yeah, I need to watch. Uh, I've seen clips on YouTube. Okay. It's so good. So Barry made a comment in season two about this guy doing the voice of Pinocchio. Yeah. And uh, it turns out it was really the actor doing the voice of this now teased Pinocchio in Barry three years ago. Fucking crazy. So it was really funny to watch and be like, oh, and he's like, you know, I think I'm in the credits, even though somebody else is doing the CGI. I'm doing the voice and somebody else is doing the filler. I think I'll be in the credits. (laughs) <laughs> but everyone was like, oh, I want to get with you. You're doing a big budget movie for Disney. I don't know. A bunch of actors, right? 
Um, it is crazy how many movies are starting to come back uh, back out. Beavis and Butthead do the universe? No way. Man. No way. All these reboots. Andor. Oh, yeah. New Disney Andor. Mission Impossible Part 1 and 2. Stranger Things 4 came out. I haven't seen that yet. And you got I'm the Gray to. Man, No Small Parts. So much shit is coming out. It's Ooh, so, That looks good. It, no it, Small Parts. Why? I like the actors. Uh, you got Idris Elba. Oh, wait. No. Never mind. That's uh, a bunch of different characters from different movies. Yeah. It's because there's no small parts. They keep Stanfield. Gotcha. Gotcha. Have you seen The Witcher? So... Yes, I have. But look, so Idris Elba, uh, Elba is doing this new movie called 3,000 Years of Longing. I don't know if we can copyright for this, but there's a mad... Let me skip to the part where Idris Elba, she finds a, a lamp. Idris Elba turns into a giant fucking genie, and his ass is just sitting in front. Look at his ears. His fingers are covered in gold. He is a, a genie that pours out his blood to grant wishes. Yeah. And then there's just a bunch of madness. I can't wait for this movie. Idris Elba looks like he's going to give the performance of a lifetime. Definitely. Damn, he should have just been. He should have been the original Aladdin instead right? of Will Smith. Oh yeah, because he would have slapped the shit out your mouth. <laughs> hey, it, there's so much shit going on in the world. It's crazy. Because then you got Johnny Depp winning the case. I've already talked about. It. He's a, he's a real life superhero. We, t- we talked on the podcast yesterday about it being National Mental Health and Victim Awareness Day. On the day that the judgment came down, now this stupid, I, I, I want to get her, her judge? brutal. I know. Not her, her, her lawyer? Not just her lawyer. Amber Heard needs to be put in a bunker, locked in there, and told to shut the fuck up. Work your debt off. You fucked up. Earn your, you earn the consequences you deserve. She'll find a loophole. There's going to there's gonna be some hole. I guarantee it. The way the society I don't think is. the privilege is siding with her, even though she's white here. I th- I don't, it's not a white she, thing. No, it's... It's, it's an Amber Heard thing. It's a women privilege, a victimhood privilege, and a white privilege. All the in trifecta. one. Trifecta. It's Amber Heard's privilege. And any privilege she can reach for. Because I know the ACLU and, and a bunch of other companies reach it out to her and are like, we think you've been a victim of domestic violence. We need you to step up and speak for women everywhere. What she needs to do, instead of suing Johnny or appealing the lawsuit, is go and sue ACLU and come out and tell us what really happened. They wrote the op-ed. They wow. said we would do it. That's a good... That's a good uh... Because everyone was doing the Me Too movements yeah. back then. And if I was a company running the ACLU and trying to get voices and donations, I'd be like, Amber, you are a pivotal... You're going to start this movement. You're going to be the front train. Everyone's riding coach on your caboose. Yeah. We need you. We've written it for you. It doesn't say anything about your husband. You're not liable at all. It'll be fine. We've got you back. And when time came to push, came to shove, the ACLU said, no, we told her nothing. I don't know who Amber Heard is. Everybody's going to cover their asses. But we prepped a bunch of paperwork for Johnny Depp. Now we're going to sue him for $90,000. Did you hear that? No. The you know, you American know. Liberties Union is suing Johnny Depp for 86000 and change. I, uh, did you hear about the few companies or a few people that stood by his side, Johnny Depp? Because everybody was just, nobody wanted to take his side. Nobody. It's too uh, toxic. There's that Dior, that uh, perfume fragrance company. I want to support them now because they stood by his side. They, they didn't bend to their will. What did Andy? Seems like the type of girl that would call Johnny Depp after the lawsuit is over. Oh God! See if he wants to get back together. That's hilarious. <laughs> when you lose a defamation lawsuit against Johnny Depp, but you still look a shit. You took a shit on his bed. <laughs> took a shit on his bed. Yeah. <laughs> um, just won the most public lawsuit. Six years to date, Amber Heard called the media to watch her walk out of control, etc. What is this? No jumper. This is him. Statement on winning. Oh, yeah. So Adam with no jumper is a pretty cool guy. What was his statement? Um, So basically, six years ago, my life, the life of my children, the life of those uh, closest to me, and also the lives of the people 
who forever may, many years have, I can't read it, uh, supported, believed in me, were forever changed. Okay. All in the blink of an eye. Uh, false, very serious allegations were levied at me via the media, which triggered a barrage of hateful content. Although the charges were never brought against me, it hurt, had already traveled around the world twice within a nanosecond and had seismic impact on my life and yeah. my career. So basically he says he's, he's, he's free, whether it was the judgment he wanted or not, so on and so, so He's forth. got the vindication he deserved. Yeah. $10.4 million, 10.35, whatever. But, uh, oh, wow. Impeach Biden is trending. What? Right now. Biden, a admin, admin holding school lunch money hostage to force transgender policies, activist parent says. Which state is this in? Uh, I don't know. Ain't shit you ever seen on Twitter in a while. This man is trying to stop, is trying to stop school shootings, not take away your fundamental human rights. This is crazy. This world. Oh, this is fucking Fox. Bye bye. Everything on Fox is so triggering. Giving. I got to read this carefully because it's right over the camera. Uh, giving, getting COVID under control, creating millions of jobs. Passing infrastructure bill, reducing hate crimes, fighting white supremacy, making America safer, creating stronger economy, lowering taxes, reducing inflation. He's great. What? Who said this? God. Serena, Democrat, Patriot. Uh, Serena, I'd love to talk to you at Patriot 92, Serena. Um, where do you get your facts? I'd love to know. Can you state your facts? Uh, you know, typically you go right here where it goes like Corinthians 7 for that prayer. Um, John 316 for that prayer. Passing infrastructure bill. That really happened. Um, but also with the bill that came reducing for other crimes. countries, you know, that we can't cash in on. Uh, reducing hate crimes. I'd love to know if that was Jehovah or that was Christianity that said that. Um, you know, because it's, it's a fact if it's in the Bible, right? Gotta be, wanna, it's got to be in the Bible. It's, it's a solid insight in there. <sighs> Let's get someone in that can make America great again. This is why we don't steal elections. 668. Uh, our gas is $7 today. $7. Not some places. Every place is $7. And I understand Biden, and I'll, I'll say this to everyone watching right now, Biden isn't the only problem, but he is a great a great threat to the issues at hand that are not being addressed or capped. It's like having a foam over your beer. It takes somebody who knows how to pour it to control it. I hate to use beer as a reference, but it's a good analogy, <laughs> right? Analogy, yeah, He's yeah. not the reason it's there. Yeah. But oh man, and we can blame the, the gas companies and all the fucking people all we want, but oh my God, if you get somebody who's like, oh, you know, I see a problem is rising on the West Coast. Gas is now three seventy five a gallon. If I drove, I'd, I'd dislike that. We should put a cap on that. Let's release a thousand barrels. Let's put uh, uh, levies and tax cuts and X, Y, and whatever you got to fucking do. Let's yeah. put tariffs on trading gas. Whatever we can do. If you want to sell gas in the United States, you got to sell it at our price. It's got to be fair, the American way. Absolutely. It sounds very Texan. But that's Abbott would do that. I know Abbott's getting his shit. Gun control needs to happen in the the Midwest. Absolutely, control, not removal. AR-15s aren't a death gun. They, proper regulations. Proper regulations. Necessary. Knives in general are taught to kids because they can harm young kids. You can teach young kids to operate firearms with safety and appreciate the things that can kill them just as much as the things that make them happy. I was taught such things. My grandfather had a loaded uh, nine millimeter revolver in his room. We all knew it was there. We all played with it. Loaded. 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 Nobody got shot, thank God. But I learned then, after seeing all those kids dying, stupid shit happening, my grandfather caught us. Beat me black and blue. Maybe not tell my parents. Didn't want to lose, you know, rights to seeing us. Yeah. But boy... That was a, a wake up and I, I respected that man more than anyone else, even in my own house. 
until I got older. He was like the, he's got his own thing. He was in the, uh, the military. He was a medic in the army. You know, he's, he's got this big old house. He's living a great life with five people in a two bedroom house and a duplex living on bread and cheese. Life was rough for a time, but man, uh, he, he gave me the inspiration to join the military. Since I was seven, I was like, I'm going to join them just like Papa. Nobody else, nobody else wanted to join the military. Nobody else wanted to do something selfless. Mm-hmm. I did. It was not. You saw how it shaped him. Yeah. He was just a very direct and blunt person. So my mother gives me all this shit all the time. Like, you remind me of Papa. You remind me of, yeah, I got a gut now. And a poor gut health, which is another thing. But, uh, man, I look back on it and I'm like, I'm thankful he beat the shit out of me. Yeah. I would have grabbed that gun and played with it, blown my head off. It's that tough love. Yeah. It's nowadays I have guns in the house. My wife sent me a clip of a open carried um, safe for the side of the bed. We don't have a metal frame, so I can't install, um, you know, a really secure pistol holder there. But I do have a case that is um, bio and uh, type in code, digit code. And so my son has been able to unlock the thumbprint of my phones. Mm-hmm. So I sm- moved to Apple for face recognition. Boy, he still somehow can get that, like flick it at me, make it look, whatever, swipe up. He's two and a half. He knows how to do that. Imagine if I didn't care to lock up firearms when he was older, he's going to get his way one way or another. He knows exactly how to get his way. And I don't know if it's just, what is it? Let me look at... Uh, two year olds. It's also good to know what your child's capable of, because a lot of a lot of parents are unaware. They don't really involve themselves into their children's lives. Why did I do that on here? Let's see. <laughs> Twitter two year olds. Yeah, you I might know, not right? find the good things. Uh, yeah, gotcha. uh, let's go. Um, smart two. Year. Okay, a two-year-old genius shows off as not a two-year-old on the Ellen Show. Our next guest I'm just seen this before. Was to go over around a lot with Corrina. Oh. <laughs> Did I read this right? He was 12 months old and could and knew the alphabet. Knew. Yeah, yeah. So when he was first born, we noticed that his eyes looked really big, and we joked that he looked shocked. <laughs> um, identify uh, the alphabet. He could spell his name. He could read his name. Bull- oh, bullshit. My son can identify the alphabet, but he cannot spell or read his name. And he's two, but he was really young with, like, YouTube. Mm-hmm. And I think they force-fed this kid. Or he's on a spectrum. But, you know, good for them if that's a thing. But, boy, there's a, there's a lot of shit. These parents, like, overindulge, you know? Yeah. It is crazy to me. Where do you think the world's going to be in five years? Five years? What's that, 2027? 2027. Uh, more electrical cars. Electrical? Oh, sorry, more electric cars. Um, probably more le- regulations. Probably definitely more regulations. Do you think there's going to be a Republican or a Democrat in the office? The Oval Office. Hmm. That's a good question. I want, I want to say a Republican based on how many displeased people uh, in America that where do, I've... Where do you stand on the line? Hmm. I mean, I value, I value both sides a lot. You know, I, um, I, I've lived with uh, Democrats and Republicans, and I have a lot of respect for the service... Well, you can, you can appreciate any one thing. Like, you could like transgender people and mm-hmm. be a Republican. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's people that make it seem like there's a list mm-hmm. to, to access this, this uh, party. I don't, I don't know why they call it a party. It's not fucking fun. You can't say you're a Republican and enjoy it. You know, that's the sad part because you are a targeted. You can't say you're a Democrat. You're targeted. I it's t- would say I, I am standing closer to the Democrat side. I was too. Yeah. Yeah, we've, I've had this conversation on here a lot. I was definitely a Democrat, voted Democrat 2008, 2012. Boy, 2016 came along. The girl I was dating at the time was a Republican, family was a Republican. The more I hung out with them, the more, great I started, values. the more I started my business and needed to access the information of how to run a business. Yeah. 
that's exactly where I knew. I was like, oh shit. And it makes so much sense to be yeah. a Republican, especially if you're a business owner and you're paying all these taxes. Oh, don't even start on that. You're not, there's no I such just, thing as a free lunch. Oh, I got an, uh, an adjustment for taxes for 2020 post paying said taxes. They're like, you owe another $17,000. Yeah. You know why? Because I won a, a casino jackpot in Washington in December of 2020 and forgot to claim it for 2,500 bucks. They're like, hey, let's just look at all his casino winnings and losses. I used to gamble a lot, but I, I didn't win that year. It was a negative. So typically you don't report if you lost, right? I send it in, boom, you don't know anything. It's like a single jackpot. But all of a sudden they're like, hey, you know that 17,000? 27,000 now because of interest. What the fuck do you mean, IRS? Interest is an ugly thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a whole new podcast tomorrow about, because I don't know if you've seen it, but I had a, a Facebook marketplace scam. Mm. Got scammed out of $565. This is one of the things that makes me kind of lean more towards like conservative Republican is I hate when people try and get shit for free. There's I love it when I get like shit for free. That's great for me. Business owner, great. You know, if I could shave a little money here, shave a little... Great for margins, but I get the excuse is margins. Yeah. Give me the little, you know, graph margins up, making money, margins down, mm, unhappy. But that's the problem is you get hit with these little scams and you're like, oh my fucking God, how dare somebody? Now I feel so entitled. I was talking to Eric yesterday. And if you've seen the video beforehand, you saw how riled up I was. Now I go home and I think about it. You know what? Like, it doesn't fucking matter. I, I make that in a day. I can make that in five days yeah. if I'm off, whatever. It's not about the money. It's the principle. It's the principle. Uh, and I'm big on expectations. When you first came to work for me, what was your expectations? What were you told? What was I told? To follow certain procedures. Mm -hmm. And that here's what we expected from you and here's what we're going to give you, right? It was mm -hmm. all laid out. It wasn't like a shock that it was relaxing and kind of like, here, do your own thing, right? Nobody said it was like, hey... This is going to be um, Frazier versus Seinfeld. You know, high tense situations versus eh, slapstick. We, we all knew it was kind of slapstick work. I am not the most regulated boss. and A lot of people give me shit about that. I understand. It's kind of like... Uh, it can be chill and it can sometimes be a war zone depending on the customer. Dude, today, uh, I'll probably again talk about this with the, the scammer video tomorrow, but we had a guy who was told, hey, you want to buy this phone cash? Final sale, great, test it out. Gave me the idea he was trying to steal a phone. Mm. Like he was really like, oh, let me get three phones out of here. And then I was like, all right, let me see your ID then. Oh, let me go get it. But like, can I see the phones first? You just get those customers. You kind of, you got to judge first because we've had snatch and grabs. And I'm like, oh, you know, unfortunately if people run, we just shoot them now. And made that joke, he laughed. S somebody who had money, but apparently he had Metro. So he tried to go take it to Metro. Yeah. And Metro sold him a cheaper phone and then talked absolute shit about the cost of the phone. It's a $450 11 Pro Max. Pretty good deal. Some of them going for like 400 bucks, but our guarantee is 90 days against defects. All sales are final because we can't rent you a phone. If we make an exception, we will probably take a restocking for activation. I give them a screen protector, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Something about him was just wrong where he went there and he came back and said, what do you say? He just set up some excuses. Maybe there's, there's it won't let me use their SIM card or something. I don't know. Yeah. I don't remember it exactly. It was something about it wouldn't let me use the memory or the SIM card. And like uh, I think Eric went up to talk to him right as we came over and he's like. You said it was a factory reset. Yeah. Something about factory reset. The guy just was livid. Mm -hmm. I want manager. I want this and that. Well, sir, your expectation was laid out for you. Mm -hmm. I'm big on that. Like lay out everything. Hey, you can't return this. Make sure you want it. Mm -hmm. I don't deal with no bullshit. You come in, smile, great. I'll help you out. Shit, I'll probably even take it back. Mm -hmm. You come in swinging, like, you know, yeah. you, somebody else has just conned you into some shit. Like, you want to listen to me? You know, that's great. But I'm not going to do anything else for you. That's yeah, it's my mentality. Almost out. as if, like, he's, he's passing a baton of whether it's blame or just anger. Oh, I got screwed over this deal, so I'm going to try to scam someone else out. So I got, I don't get the short end of the stick. Yeah, he can go resell it. That's That's his prerogative you can mm -hmm. you know, I'm not all about the customer is always right and I keep telling it's not because it's clearly not the that's world not the is case. not the same anymore it's you not. work at Roma's how often do you deal with customers um, we got a lot of, a lot of regulars they're, they're pretty happy content with the consistency as I noticed as long as there's consistency customers are happy 
So we don't get too many upset customers, to be honest. Oh, everyone's eating, so they're very like, uh Yeah, yeah, it's like, you know, once you can be initially up front kind of rude, like, oh, it's going to take 15, 20 minutes for me to get my pizza. Everything takes time. And I could say something like a backhanded, like, response, like, yeah, good things take time. But what is that? There's a saying I used to say last year a lot. It was cheap, fast. And they see the prices of the food. It's like a premium pizza place, so it's not going to be cheap like Domino's. Cheap, fast, or good? Pick one. So this was something. You can only have two out of the three. Yeah, two out of three. So it's one of those things where it's like you can either have, I'll change so that customers, I, I think I should 3D print this onto like a giant billboard. That's a good idea. Oh, that's such a good idea. So it says, I got to move the screen. That's what it says because that's the wide screen. Okay, so basically, I'm gonna move you over, sorry. So basically you got top is good, you got your bottom is cheap, in between is slow, and then over is fast. You get to pick two. Most people will have it good and fast. I provide a service that is good and fast. It stands with a warranty. Now, there are customers that get the cheap and low quality because they beg for it. I'm like, all right, I can order you an aftermarket screen, et cetera. But I live the customer service by this. What they want me to do, like I have a guy with a pump from an RV where it's expensive mm. and fast because to get the parts, buy the things, and he, we can't insure it because it's an automotive thing. So it's off the books. It's like, all right, hey, we're not going to run this through Love to Fix. I'll do it on private matter. And it's expensive because the amount of work that has to go into it, it's crazy. But boy, that is one of my favorite diagrams and I am going to print that and post it and post it this big and be like, you get to choose two. Two, put your fingers up, tell me what it is. I'll put it, have it 3D printed in all different colors. It'll be fantastic. Two out of the three, which is, you got fast. You can have it super cheap and bad. Uh, You can have it fast and good. You can have it Bad and respectful or bad, you know, you got to pick money and experience or money I, I and choose, quality. Uh, choose cheap and good. I, as long as you're not in a hurry, I understand sometimes you're in a circumstance where you got to rush and you'll pay that extra dollar. So. Yeah, it's it's funny, man. Patience is a virtue. It, it's not something that I usually, because like typically my give a fuck meter breaks. So it's like a watch and like, ah, battery's dying. I've, I've got no more fucks to give. I've said that since I was a kid before it was a saying. And lately, you know, there's a lot of books that come out about people being their own men and feeling more alpha and like not giving a fuck or wasting their energy. And I'm like, I've said these things for decades. Nobody has listened to me. I may not be the most alpha giga chad, but like. <laughs> You're giga chad. I, I watched Beeple's release of that thing and I was like, oh man, but that's a whole other story. Um, do you think this comes from like the root of people want this instantaneous gratification ever since we've gotten like the whole hot and ready food, fast food, uh, internet speed? Don't let me start on fast food. My wife is any excuse to order fast food and, it, and to her, it's not bad. Me, I've got a gallbladder was removed, so I have to change my diet. Mm-hmm. I still haven't done it. It's been like six months. Now I'm starting to feel the repercussions of like gut issues yeah. and I'm like, man, She's going to kill me on fast food. That's going to be her slow and steady, like, I only got to deal six months. Mm -hmm. And then he's out of the picture. Hmm. You know, but. Health is wealth, man. uh, Man, I'm telling her. I'm telling her. I'm like, please don't. So she made this, like, cream of mushroom sauce and some chicken and some rice yesterday. It was fucking amazing. Really good. Home-cooked meals. But the, the, oh, well, if the kid's not going to be there, I'm like, the kid never eats anyway. He's going to grandma's house. You better make dinner. I did not want to be demanding about it, but I'm like, please just don't order fast food. I have fast food for lunch every day because nobody ever makes dinner at home that has leftovers anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's a whole separate thing. And I'm like, you know, there's a million and one things we could do, but follow through. Like you were saying, consistency is bad. Me changing my diet is the hard part right now. I'm just so busy. I think You are what you eat. Yeah, I think that's where we'll leave it for today, but... Thank you for coming by. Thank you for having me. It's Friday. It is. Sorry, my back is killing me in this chair. Uh, If you're not subscribed, I don't care. If you're viewing, share it with a friend. Share it now. Share it. Sharing is caring. 
No, Sharon is not Karen. Get Karen the fuck out of here. But yeah, go ahead. Share it. Post it to your page. Post it to your friends. Hang out moments with uh, Abdur are great. You know, we'll get back to the scheduled content here next uh, video. Well, we'll appreciate it. If you didn't share it, 